students and welcome back to our English B classroom. In this lesson, we want to continue looking at elements of poetry, imagery, and this is our second lesson. So it is part two. I am your teacher, Mrs. Carla Wilson-John, and I'll be taking you through the paces. So let's recap. Imagery. What did we say was the root word for imagery? Image. Yes. And our definition was imagery is the author's use of language that appeals to our five senses to help the reader paint a picture in his or her mind. Yes. All right. And we went through our five senses, our sense of touch, sight, taste, smell, and hearing. The author or the poet uses words that appeal to these five senses. So, enabling you to be able to imagine what he or she wants you to imagine. In this lesson, we're going to look at poems that touch on two more of our senses. The first sense we want to look at is your sense of touch. And I'm going to give you some words for you to imagine words that you can envision that all appeal to your sense of touch. You can feel these things. For example, rough, smooth, furry, hard, slimy, soft, dry, spiky, prickly, sticky, slippery, and wet. All of these words, adjectives, appeal to your sense of touch. You can feel these things. Now I want to give you a sentence. This will also appeal to your sense of touch. Check it out. The sharp edge of the paper cut my finger and made it sting. Oh, could you imagine that? Have you ever had a paper cut? Kind of hurts. So you should be able to imagine what this author is saying here or the writer. The sharp edge of the paper cut my finger and made it sting like ouch all right so now we want to go directly into imagery in poetry let's have some fun remember we're looking at our sense of touch this poem is written by roma sinanan Feet in muddy puddles feel squishy, slimy, oh so real. Lying on the sandy shore, prickly, scratchy, that's for sure. Walking along snowy tracks, icy, slushy, it's a fact. Furry socks upon my feet. Soft, hairy, thick, and warm to me. 
brushing feathers on my face so soft so tickly like silken lace peanut butter on my tongue sticky pasty all along marshmallows between my teeth soft and fluffy what a treat mashed potato in my mouth squishy wet squashy yet were you able to imagine the feelings there what those things would feel like let's look at the feel words squishy slimy prickly scratchy slushy and icy oh that is cold and that it's soft and hairy we missed furry thick and warm feathers what do feathers feel like mm, so soft it's brushy oh you can just feel the lushness of feathers can't you imagine it sticky and pasty have you ever eaten marshmallows how do they feel soft and squashy and mashed yes fluffy all of these bring out imagery of touch let's look at our second poem I love the sensation of touching slimy, slippery mud or soft silk like the feathers of a bird. Squashed ants or cold fish make my spine tingle. I can't bear to touch crumbling, rotting wood. Spongy foam rubber feels so soft on my face. It is another thing I love to touch. This was by K.M. Avalon Beach School, Sydney, Australia. I have some questions for you students based on this poem. So before I ask you those questions, let's go through the poem again. Let's read it. Imagine it as I read. Remember, you can either close your eyes or follow me along as I read. But you ought to imagine. The poet, the poet is taking us places. The poet wants us to feel what he feels. The persona wants us to feel all the sensations that he enjoys. I love the sensation of touching slimy, slippery mud or soft silk like the feathers of a bird. Squashed ants or cold fish make my spine tingle. I can't bear to touch crumbling, rotting wood. Spongy foam rubber feels so soft on my face. It is another thing I love to touch. Your first question is, find the touch words in lines one and two. Find the touch words in lines one and two. So in line one, we have slimy, slippery. In line two, we have soft. Question two, 
Name the touch words in line three. Name the touch words in line three. Your answers are squashed, cold, and tingle. Number three. How does the writer feel when he touches crumbling wood? How does the writer feel when he touches crumbling wood? Your answer is, he probably feels grossed out. He does not like it at all. He can't bear it. Your final question is, select the touch words in line five. Select the touch words in line five. Your answers should be spongy and soft. Wonderful students. So we're on to our third sense as portrayed through poetry. So we're gonna go on to testing. We're gonna be learning test through imagery. I have some words, test words. Words I'm going to give you, and I want you to be able to have your taste buds working. Imagine, as I call these words, delicious, spicy, sour, fruity, hot, sweet, tasty, juicy. Bitter, zesty, flavorful, mm. sugary, yummy, salty, savory, scrumptious. Were you able to imagine any of those? All right. I'm going to give you a sentence now. One bite of the sour lemon caused my lips to pucker. What facial expressions do you make? What do you experience when you have something that's sour? A lemon. The sentence says, one bite of the sour lemon caused my lips to pucker oh but it's good for you now we're gonna look at our poems taste imagine it i have eaten the plums that were in the ice box and which you were probably saving for breakfast forgive me they were delicious 
so sweet and cold. That's it. What were your taste words in this poem? Delicious. Sweet. Not cold. No. Cold has to do with your sense of touch. You feel the coldness. You cannot taste coldness. No. So in this poem, you have two taste words. Delicious and sweet. Good job. Let's look at another. Tasty, tangy, smells of summer. Fruits are succulent and ripe. Thirsty birds skip from branch to branch, looking for water trough. This was a quatrain. Tasty, tangy, smells of summer. Have you ever smelled something within the air? Maybe when we're cooking or if we're walking through a garden, you smell the air. It smells so fruity delicious. That's not a word. <laughs> but yes, you can smell the citrus acid within the air. So here, you ought to imagine the same. It is tasty and it's tiny smells of summer fruits. Perhaps they're oranges or tangerine. Fruits are succulent and ripe. They're ready for you to eat. Thirsty birds skip from branch to branch looking for water troughs. I have one more poem for you. This one is a little bit longer. Her mouth watered. Her tongue burned. Oh, how she yearned for the sour, peppery, mango pickle. Could you imagine that? When you have a pickle, when you see a pickle or even think about making some pickle mango, instantaneously your mouth begins to water. And so here in this poem, her mouth watered, her tongue burned, oh how she yearned for the sour peppery mango pickle. And that's it for our lesson today, students. Let's summarize. We looked at touch words and taste words. Yes. Touch words give the reader a sensation or a feeling. And imagery relating to taste can provoke your sensory taste buds. You are able to feel based on those touch words within the poems, weren't you? And your mouth watered and you began to taste and imagine based on the taste words within the poems as well. That's it for today, students. It was wonderful having you. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.